Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzzweaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, pop culture, social media, technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. If this is your first time here to the channel and you're watching this via new tech, whether it be BitChute, Rumble, or Odyssey, I want to thank all of you guys for your continued support and follows there, as well as all of you here on YouTube. Your guys' likes, shares, and comments help contribute to the channel, as well as that algorithm that we're always battling. So I want to thank all of you guys for your continued support. All right, guys, so we're in the middle of the holiday season. If you guys plan on doing any ordering online and specifically on Amazon, I'd like for you guys to consider using my influencer link below this video. When you click on the link, it will take you to my influencer page, which is essentially similar to the Amazon landing page and works very similarly. Of course, on there, you'll see some items that uh, I have reviewed or products that I use, as well as equipment for the channel. You guys can just use the search, fe search feature above to look for anything that it is that you want to make a purchase of. And of course, that generates a commission here for the channel. Your privacy is protected because all I see is that a purchase was made. So if you guys are doing some online purchasing this holiday, consider using my Amazon link influencer page link. We start things off from CNBC. Wholesale prices measures rose 9.6% in November from a year ago. The fastest pace on record. Now, if you've been a part of the channel at least for the last few months, you know that we have talked about inflation and at least by December, we are anticipating seeing, if not feeling, some of the uh, effects of it without a doubt. Wholesale prices increased at their quickest pace on record in November in the latest sign that the inflation pressures bedeviling the economy are still present, the Labor Department reported on Tuesday. So not particularly unusual, not anything we weren't anticipating to see happen. And, you know, because of these changes, because of the shortages, because of these things happening, and, of course, more specifically, because the establishment made sure that President Trump wasn't going to be in the way again, we're seeing a lot of changes, like from General Mills, to raise some prices by 20% in January. Yes, that's right. The special interests, the capitalists, the corporatists, or all of them are taking advantage of this opportunity because things are about to change. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. News of rising food prices has frequented headlines in recent months, and there doesn't appear to be any reprieve in the near future. That's right. CNN Business reported November 23rd that General Mills plans to raise prices on hundreds of products across dozens of brands early next year and by a considerable amount, 20%. That is just absolutely amazing. And another another part of it is, is a drive to a particular direction. You know, who knows what's going on in the background with the with the establishment to know where these partic particular directional shifts are because the establishment bases a lot of their stuff on metrics and flow and uh, information on data and statistics to kind of drive their um, decision making versus how is it affecting the country? How is it affecting people? How is it affecting the nation? They're not particularly concerned about it. They're concerned about their own businesses and how they are succeeding. But of course, we're seeing a lot of these dramatic changes because we're seeing that the establishment appointed vote by mail surrogate President Joe Biden just isn't cutting it. He just isn't enough, really. Now, as we talked about from the Atlantic, they just needed his corporeal presence. But the problem with Joe Biden's corporeal presence is it doesn't give anybody a sense of assurance. People aren't particularly trusting on the part of what he's saying because he's incoherent. And, of course, we know that uh, he does suffer from some sort of cognitive decline. Now, I don't say that to disparage the man or to be derisive. I'm simply making observations that everyone can see on a superficial level. And that's where the Democrats operate from is a superficial level. And they realize that Joe Biden just doesn't have that sense of leadership. He doesn't have that sense of structure and confidence building that we would anticipate from a president who is a little more coherent and capable to communicate clearly. And we know that he doesn't because you need only watch any of his videos, anything, watch anything by Joe Biden. And you will clearly see that. He isn't entirely engaged with what's actually going on around him. Now, that's not entirely his fault. So I'm not blaming Joe Biden for being an elderly man with potential cognitive decline. So Biden's successor chatter grows and Harris isn't scaring off anyone. So the Democrats are frightened. They're concerned. 
they really kind of pushed Joe Biden out there because he had the scent of uh, of uh, Obama on him, really. So he w he is a surrogate. He is a character. He is a vessel for the Democratic Party. And you know, we we have some people that are potentially lined up to take you know to kind of take over there. And the only person I can really see with any sort of clout would be uh, Stacey Abrams. But um, in this particular article, it just says, you know, President Joe Biden says he intends to run for re-election in 2024, but not all Democrats believe him, nor are they convinced his number two would be the clear heir if he does choose to opt out. So already, and their approvals are ter absolutely terrible. I think uh, Kamala Harris is like in the 20, like 26% approval. It's, it's absolutely abysmal. And not only are they falling out of favor with the Democrat Party and perhaps many of the blue states, but... Now, with this from Fox News Business, Biden admin declines to extend student loan pause, snubbing progressives. So there you have it right there. This will take place on February the 1st. And this is a huge, gigantic button issue for progressives. And that is that they had the responsibility. They went and got their student loans knowing that, of course, they can read that they have to pay them back. But of course, they found themselves in a situation where they majored in something that maybe didn't have a particular uh, uh, industry out there that was really doing well, or they just chose poorly on what particular degree they chose, or they overextended themselves with loans because, of course, during the Obama administration, he was encouraging many of them to get loans, and now we're in this vicious cycle where many of these students aren't able to pay their loans back. It took me eight years to pay mine off, but the Biden administration declines to extend the student loan uh, pause snubbing progressive. This is going to be a huge problem for Joe Biden. Huge. But again, the establishment got him in there. The establishment will continue to do what they want because the establishment isn't concerned about students. They're not concerned about Americans. They aren't concerned about America. They're concerned about recouping from being held back by President Trump. The Biden administration still plans to resume federal student loan payments at the beginning of February, rejecting a push from other Democrats to extend the pandemic relief program for millions of borrowers. So as you can see here, no mystery that the Democrats are going to, of course, take advantage of a crisis, never let it go to waste, and they will continue to push this. Who knows how far we'll go along. Right now we're in the Omicron variant. There's no telling how far that will go. And of course, we just saw uh, uh, Boris Johnson address the nation there. Unfortunately, I didn't have an opportunity to listen to that address. But again, they're still pushing the continuing concern and focus on the pandemic. Now, I'm not trying to uh, dismiss the fact that uh, the virus is still out there, nor am I trying to uh, tamp it down. I'm just simply saying that it will continue to go on. But on kind of a bit of lighter, interesting news, a little bit of tit for tat here on the Twitters. If you haven't already, be sure you're following me on Twitter. You can find the link to all of my uh, social media accounts below this video, so be sure to join me there. So Elizabeth Warren tweeted, let's change the rigged tax code so the person of the year will actually pay taxes and stop freeloading off everyone else. Oh, really? Is that right, Elizabeth Warren? And Elon Musk replied, and if you open your eyes for two seconds, you would realize I will pay more taxes than any American in history this year. Don't spend it all at once. Oh, wait, you already or uh, you did already. So. One could make a cheeky kind of snarky comment about Elizabeth Warren attacking an African-American because if you did not know, Elon Musk is from South Africa. So nonetheless, guys, I just kind of wanted to end it there. I thought it was kind of amusing that this little kind of tit for tat goes on. This is Twitter for you. This is what you can typically see on Twitter each day, the back and forth of uh, individuals, the culture war, the cancel culture, the woke all of them organize here on Twitter. So you're probably saying, then why in the heck do you want me to follow you on Twitter? Well, that's a good question because I get this all the time from many people across new tech. And that is, well, why are you still on those platforms? Well, because normies use these platforms. Your everyday mom, pops, whomever out there, this is what they know because this is kind of, in a way, what they trust, I suppose is the way to say it, or it's more mainstream. It's something they recognize. And so they aren't going to be out there looking for new tech. And if you do any Google searches, it's not going to pull up any new tech anyway. So that's why I say follow me on these platforms like YouTube, like Twitch or, or Twitter, and like uh, you know the, the social media platforms, Instagram that I belong to, because that way you guys will at least get to see that, yes, this information is out there is trying to go out there despite the uh, overwhelming sense of cancel culture, 
wokeness, and outrage mobs that try to shut everyone down. And that's what I have for you guys this Friday. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. Thank you for the likes, the shares, and the comments. Those likes and comments really help with the algorithm. And, of course, hitting that like tells the algorithm that uh, you want to see continued content here from our channel. I want to thank all of you guys on Rumble, Odyssey, and BitChute, particularly all the most recent follows. Thank you guys for your support there, as well as all of you here on YouTube. And appearing right there on the screen, that would be the channel icon to subscribe, as well as clicking on notifications if you want to know when there's content here on the channel to include the Friday Vlog and the gaming video shorts. It's all included right there. And I will see all of you right there behind that camera next week.